Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another firearms unboxing. And this one's kind of special because I wasn't sure if I was actually going to unbox it or not. If you guys follow me on my secondary channel, the Texas Gun Vault, it's kind of a behind the scenes casual channel where you guys can see a lot of things that I'm working on and I talk about things that I can't always flush out into full videos on here. I recently showed off this box right here. I was able to pick up one of the US military's product overruns of the SIG M18. And this is an unopened box. This is exactly like the US military gets it when SIG ships to them. And so I was able to pick it up and I asked my viewers over there, should I unbox it? And a lot of people said I should leave it sealed. And then there were some other people who said, you know, you only live once, you're a collector, you want to see it and enjoy it. And so I have made my decision. I am going to unbox this, I am going to break the seal, and we're going to do it here on camera. But before we do, I want to show you guys my other SIG M18s and a couple of variants that I have. Well, first off, we have the commercial version. And this version looks cosmetically very similar to the one that the U.S. military currently uses, which of course we have a coyote tan firearm, but with black controls. And this is the commercially available one. It does not have the product number or the cage code. It says SIG P320M18 and it has an M18 prefix serial number. This is just the standard one that you can get off of the shelf. And this is the one that I enjoy shooting. While there are just a few differences between this and the military version, this is the one I will always take the range. It's not as collectible, obviously, because this is just a production P320 that looks like the M18. I also have built a short barreled rifle version of the M18, and this is on the BNT USW320 chassis. Now, this has a standard P320 trigger group in it, and I purchased a commercial M18 barrel and slide for it, and I think that looks really cool. But once again, this is just a commercial version. Now, in my collection, I have the M18 Commemorative. Now this is a firearm that SIG came out with that is an exact copy of the one that the military adopted at the time of adoption. And so they only made, I believe, 5,000 of these. As you can see, it has Coyote tan controls. I have it in the commemorative box. I did register it with SIG, so I got the special challenge coin and the certificate of authenticity that is signed by Ron Cohen, the CEO and president of SIG. So this is that collector's edition, the commemorative edition that's supposed to be just like the one that was submitted. It does have all of the markings on it that they're supposed to have. However, the serial number range of this starts with an M18 prefix as well. And the US military does not use that serial number prefix. Now they've been delivering these to the US military for a while. The military asked them to change it from the Coyote tan controls to black controls. And they've had a series of overruns. So I guess SIG has just made too many. Maybe the military is not purchasing them all. And SIG has decided to release some of these to the civilian market. And so this is the exact box that these are supposed to be shipped to the military in. And these have the correct serial number prefixes. This one starts with TC, which I believe the C stands for compact. And this is supposed to be right off the production run of the M18. So we're going to open this right now. And in preparation, I did buy another case for it. So this is just the standard case. Now, there's no special challenge coin or anything you can get from SIG on the overruns. So I just bought the standard case. It has the SIG challenge coin, an M18 kind of plaque in there, and just the standard card. But I felt if I was going to open this, I'm probably not going to shoot it as a collector, but I did want a presentation case for this particular gun because it is going to be a collectible, I think, in the years to come. So let's go ahead and let's open this box. And we're going to open it with something special. We're going to open it with my Spyderco military. So if I'm going to open a military pistol, I might as well do it with a military knife. All right, and here we go. So there is the seal. Let's open this thing up. I know some people are going to hate me for this, but I want to enjoy it. Let's open this nice and slow. 
And there we go. Put the knife to the side. And here it is. I have not seen this at all. The way it comes to the US military. I'm sure there's gonna be a few extra things in here because these were designed to be sold to civilians, so they probably had to throw in a lock. Yes, they did. So we can just get rid of that. We got the standard owner's manual and all the swag and stickers and all that that normally come with a standard firearm. They have to include this by law. And then we have the gun and two extra magazines. So it comes with three and they're all factory sealed. So that's the way that they would have shipped. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pistol. And it is definitely sealed. It has all of the correct markings on it. it looks just like my commemorative edition. It has the part number, it has the cage code, and it has the proper TC serial number prefix. And the gun looks brand new because it is. All right, well, let's go ahead and open this thing up. And I'll be very careful on this. I'd like to save the actual packaging. So. Let's just open it like that. Let's see if that's enough for me to get the pistol out. Maybe I need to cut it just a little bit more. And by the way, if you hear some thunder in the background, it is raining and thundering here in North Texas today while I'm filming this. All right, so here is the pistol. It looks like it's actually finished in a little bit different color than my other M18s. It has the flush fit magazine, I guess is what they ship it with. And these, of course, should be the extended ones. I'll put one of those in when I put it in the presentation box. Let's go ahead and pull the slide back, remove the indicator there. Make sure, of course, we are clear. Looks like we are good. Let's drop the slide and there we go. Yeah, and that actually has a different marking than the commemorative one does. So we have the manufacturer cage code and the part number. That is really cool. So this was a gun that was destined for the U.S. military that they just did not procure. So this is right off the line with all of the correct markings, the correct serial number range, prefix, the correct color when it comes to the controls. This is really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean this thing up and put it in the presentation box, and then I'll display all of my M18s. So here we go. We have the M18 overrun in the display box, all cleaned up. I just kind of wiped it down. I didn't put any oil on it because I don't want it to seep into the box, but there we go. I think this is a great companion to my commemorative edition. Obviously, I have the commercial edition that I take to the range, shoot and enjoy. And then obviously I have the P320 M18 USW SBR in the B&T chassis, which is really cool. So I guess I have four M18s now. Now I just have to get an overrun of the M17 to go with my commemorative M17. So I guess that's now on the block for me to try to find and procure. So anyway, am I a geeky collector or what? What do you guys think? I know some people said I shouldn't open the box. Some people said I should and I should enjoy it. So you guys have seen my decision. Are any of you mad? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And it's so cool to have one of these M18 overruns. So, as always, thanks for watching.